All right, brothers. Um, Quest, like I said, uh, my subscribers love the video response. I always try to do this because of the fact sometimes um, it don't have posted at the bottom of the screen or the subtitle what I'm doing. So, got that out the way. All right, for my brothers, HYK 12 tribes of Israel. Like I said, I admire y'all work getting out there trying to teach the accurate truth about the chosen people of God and et cetera, et cetera, as far as prophecy. But, once again, I'm going to have to say that's inaccurate about their teaching about Egypt and Egypt being referred to as bondage. Let me show you how. Let me prove to you how. Remember, when Joseph, when they came to Joseph for food, because they were starving of grain. Remember, Joseph welcomed, welcomed them into Egypt. So when Joseph welcomed them into Egypt, did Joseph welcome them into bondage? No. Joseph welcomed them as citizens of Egypt. So when it says, I have brought you out of the land of Egypt, comma, see, comma, the also the house of bondage that you was in. It's not saying that Egypt was the land of bondage. It's saying the house of bondage. Meaning what the new Pharaoh, after the one that Joseph ruled with, had established for the Israelites. He put them in a house of bondage out of his fear of them trying to take over Egypt. So it wasn't necessarily saying Egypt was the land of bondage or the house of bondage as far as the land itself. It was saying the condition that they was in, or the predicament, as far as under the new Pharaoh's legislation. So, just to be more accurate on there. Now, as far as Deuteronomy 28 and 68, that you should e enter Egypt again. What it was saying, like I said, they did, if you read in Isaiah chapter 19, talks about Egypt. How the Egyptians or Egypt also fell and became enslaved. Isaiah chapter 20 verse 4 I believe. 3 and 4. Talks about Egypt and Cush. Talking about the enslavement of Africa and Egypt. Because you know Egypt is a part of Africa. Well actually it's like they two want you know Africa the continent and Egypt was like his own country but yet still it was linked and tied to one another kind of like Atlanta and Memphis you know or you know different like twin cities in New York so they're right there how Egypt and Cush that's why I said both of you all since it was a lot of dealings of in the land of Cush with Egypt we know this by Moses and the Cushite woman. Of course, when Israel came over and they mostly grew up in Egypt, of course, they traveled west. They had affiliations with people in the land of Cush. And like I said, we know this by Moses. When they inherited the land of Canaan on the edge, but you already know all this. But here's the thing. To, to take it in even further, the revelation that came to me about that particular scripture. It's this right here. <laughs> when it say you shall enter Egypt again, but this time by ships, they entered Egypt again, but of course the Israelites didn't get off the ship. They didn't get off this ship, but it was Egyptians also gathered. The truth is, when our ancestors entered Egypt again, it was over here in America. It say you shall enter Egypt again. True enough, you shall enter in a bondage again, but this time by ships. So when they came over here to this soil, this was Egypt all over again for Israel. How? Is actually it was backwards. See, they came and entered in Egypt as citizens of Egypt when they first came into Egypt, and then on the flip side, they became slaves for almost 300 some years. When they came over here to America, they didn't come over here as citizens, but came over here as slaves. And then it flipped over on the flip sides, then becoming citizens of America. Doing the same thing as they did over in Egypt, 
They joined Egypt's armies. They helped build up Egypt's cities, making Egypt the most powerful nation in the world. When Israel left, Israel I mean Egypt collapsed. Of course, the Pharaoh knew what he lost. He knew without Israel that Egypt could not last. Egypt could not exist. So that's the prophecy right there today. Is without our ancestors being on this soil, without the black people or the so-called blacks and African Americans on this land, this country would not exist. That's why that was the whole we saw the results of that during the first Great Depression. When the slaves were free, when Abraham Lincoln signed the Proclamation of Emancipation, there was a depression right there. We already knew how much the people over here would suffer without our ancestors because they thought it was a panic because the cotton business was a booming business. But without the slaves to pick the cotton, oh no. So it was the same mentality as the Pharaoh as the Pharaoh had with our ancestors. It was like, I don't know, without the Israelites, you know, we, sh we screwed. Without them, we need them. They the one help was getting uh, this country or, uh, yeah, our country moving. They the one that was helping to keep things organized in the order. So that's why he chased out them. So that's why once again, it happened all over again. When our ancestors was free from slavery in the cotton field, it was the same thing. They started getting chased down and that's when laws and all that, the Jim Crow South and all that took place. Because how upset they were because they lost their slaves. So now it's a panic. It's like, oh no, it's a depression. We don't have the slaves. Who going to pick our crops? Who going to knit our clothes? Same thing. It was the same type of panic as with the Pharaoh. So, when a Pharaoh was chasing after the Israelites, that was the Great Depression of Egypt. When they freed our people over here, our freed our ancestors on this soil, that was the Great Depression of America. <laughs> it's beautiful. I know. Israel got free in Egypt. Great Depression in Egypt. Israel got free in America. Great Depression in America. And let, let's read also. As I can go on, bro, I study probably just as hard as, or even deeper, about the prophecy and who we read out. But I, I mark something off. Here it is, right here, about the truth of the prophecy. Also in Genesis chapter twelve, verse three, it say, "I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples on the earth." will be blessed through you. And this is talking about the descendants of Abraham. Saying all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. So you got Pele, the soccer player from Brazil. You got the uh, Dream Team, which is mostly Israelite or African American. You got um, soccer. I would name soccer. You got golf, Tiger Woods. You got some of course mostly all the sports you got uh, war generals there is a lot of black war generals up in the army the reason is our military is so successful and powerful like Colin Powell you know he a famous war general he real honorable you got all these different areas where so all the peoples of the earth shall be blessed by you you got the different tours and the concerts Beyonce, etc. Well, Asia and Korea, all these different places they travel, people is fascinated and blessed by the presence of African American entertainers and singers. So it's so many things on this I can go down, but time running out. So yeah, I just wanted to freshen up on that and touch bases on it. But as always, brothers, peace be unto you. Christ for life.